Has anyone here ever been addicted to pawn shops? Well, I'm thinking I might be on the road to that. And I ain't looking there for you know, expensive gold or any kind of rare items like that. But I look there for musical instruments because it is actually turning out that pawn shops are sometimes better music stores than music stores. Because you can find all types of different instruments, including something like this. So uh, the story behind this is that uh, I've been looking actually for an accordion to buy. So I was going to my local music store, which was uh, unfortunately the last one in town because the other ones had closed down. Um, and they were saying, uh, try either online or a uh, local pawn shop. So I was deciding to be uh, trying that. I stopped at one, which is uh, where it was closer to uh, the downtown area, and they had some. They had actually some good musical instruments, but not anything that I that was intriguing to me. So I looked up what the other ones were in town, and I was noticing that there was one that was directly in the hood. <laughs> yes, the hood, direct uh, the ghetto of this town. And so I was thinking, you know what? Why not? Why not? Because you know. Something there might be worth it. So yes, I ventured out into the hood, into uh, the one pawn shop that is out there, and I found, uh, amongst a bunch of other cool instruments, this. Which is an auto harp that is from, well, a long time ago. I mean, you can just look at this and you can be seeing, it is old. <laughs> uh, from I cannot even I cannot even fathom what uh, time period this is from maybe even uh, 1800s. Uh, the uh, I was asking the guy uh, the music expert at the at the shop. Uh, well, he, they said he was a music expert. He was saying yeah, this was from all he said was it was from the ancient times, and it actually was used in churches to play hymns on. And I was able to get this off him for uh, just about $45. Not $4,500, just $45. So, yes, venturing into the hood one, what, Thursday evening? Worth it. Because I, I was able to find this thing, which I have seen instruments like this before, and they've been in museum cases. It's the only place that I've been seeing something like this. Uh, so, and then I, I was just able to have this in my possession from some, some pawn shop. So, um, what I can see about it, you know, auto harp, the, you know, I can see, for some reason, instruments these days, a lot of instruments, including, like, harps, uh, other, you know, you know, uh, your more typical standardized harp, um, do not use this kind of color of, or tone of wood anymore. And I might as well know if this used to be a different color and somehow on the way got uh, the color got faded or whatnot, but you just ain't seeing instruments this color these days. Um, very interesting logo around the soundboard here. Not any kind of design that I have uh, seen <laughs> before, uh, except on you know very very old pieces of art. Uh, it almost, it does not look that American, it looks very European. Also it has this symbol right here, which is a harp, two horns, and a book of music. So I'm out of the know if that is the symbol of the company that made this, or whatever else it might be. Also you can see that the each string has its note name right under it. Which is, you know, kind of the olden day equivalent of a cheat sheet that you might see on uh, an electric piano made for <laughs> for young kids. I see these two pieces of metal right here. This one is actually coming loose here. And at first, when I was getting this, I was thinking it was uh, quite unique because it did not have one of those uh, the the uh, chord panel, which has the which on most auto harps you find, which has buttons as is a panel over usually the uh, left side of it and it has buttons that control uh, you know different pitches of the strings. I was finding this unique because it did not have one but then I see I was uh, 
realizing this, these metal pieces probably were uh, what held that uh, when it once was there. And then somewhere along the line it got taken off. Uh, what else about this? Yeah, this is uh, quite a lot bigger than most harpsichords that, uh, not harpsichords, auto harps that uh, you see. They're usually, you know, quite, you know, more compact, compatible. And this one is just, uh, I mean, just, just a lot bigger. It has these two metal knobs on the back of it for, you know, uh, I wanted to put it down somewhere without uh, damaging the rest of it. There was, I could see, there was once one right up there, and there was also these two, or three, yeah, these three holes, one there, and then two there that uh, I'm out of the know of what I was for, or why they would want to put something in the back of it. When I got it, obviously this was completely out of tune, and I actually was uh, recording some sounds on it for, you know, either uh, for the you know, future reference for if I ever was needing some kind of stock sound effects for, uh, for creepy sounds, because this sounded like, uh, like legitimate horror movie <laughs> uh, sound effects. Quite thankfully, I was actually able to tune this because I have a tuner that actually fit the tuning knobs on this. Uh, you can see it is this little piece of metal that has two uh, squares on each, each end. I had this from uh, when I got this, which is a uh, lap harp or a music maker or, or dulcimer harp that I got when I was, I think, seven. Uh, actually, in a place from a place in North Carolina called Mac is Back, and uh, this is this guy who, who makes these these handmade instruments, and uh, and this this came with the tuning key to tune this, which uh, I've tuned up before, and it sounds quite nice. And uh, quite thankfully, again, this was able to fit the tuning knobs on this. And I was able to tune it up, and well, this is how it sounds. Here's some of the individual notes. Do not know how exactly you're uh, supposed to play one of these, but uh, I, can only, I can only just assume. And then the uh, higher range. Here's the chords. These are uh, these notes here are individual notes, and these ones are notes that were grouped together to uh, form to uh, form chords, which is uh, I had good with chords that well. So uh, this is this chord, another one, this one. Yeah, I think it sounds quite nice. Uh, I've not tuned it in a bit, 
So, I mean, I think it probably needs to be retuned a bit, especially since how, how old it is. I'm surprised I was actually able to get it to uh, sound even remotely good. So I am going to be doing a bit of research on here to be finding out, uh, you know, when this could have been from, what kind of auto harp is it, uh, you know, who made it, where it could have been from. So we'll be checking back in, uh, we'll check we find out. Alright, so here are auto harps. This looks more like... This does look more like mine, but actually more modern. Antique Oscar Schmidt 8 chord auto harp. Ah, now here's one. This, this is what I have. It looks slightly different, but look at this. Is that not it? Now it has a different logo on it. It has, uh, as you can see, uh, an American Eagle with a flag on it, which uh, I was saying this one uh, looked quite European, but uh, I, would, I, I guess it could be made in the US but uh, obviously a while ago. And yes, the cord button panel did used to be there, I can see. So I'm finding several ones like these, and the reason that I'm finding them familiar and similar is because of the same pattern around uh, the soundboard right there. That is pretty much the same pattern. So I definitely think I'm onto something. This looks exactly like this, but just with a different logo on it. I wonder if this was a, uh, made before this, or after this, or some kind of subsidiary brand, or a ripoff brand. These almost look like the same, the same one. And I, I wonder even more how somebody brought this to a pawn shop. How, how are they, uh, getting in uh, possession of one? Yes, there's a whole different part, a part underneath it, which is not here. On this one, yes, and I could even see there are screws on the bottom here on, on that picture, but you can see the screw holes right here and on the other side. I can be seeing it says something Concert Harp Company of America. So I'm going to look that up. Here's a, here's a similar model, which is does not look uh, the same one, but Paramount Concert Harp Company. Got it. All right, so uh, I'm seeing a lot of similar harps under uh, listed under Paramount Concert Harp Company. Um, now I'm sure that this whatever company this is would have also sold um, you know, your, your concert harps because I would think a concert harp would be something more like this. Uh, I've... Did they use auto harps? I mean, I've only been hearing of these uh, referred to as auto harps, and, uh, which is making me think, were they used in concerts as well? And, uh, the guy at the pawn shop told me that they were, uh, used in churches, so maybe they were used in concerts, but, uh, I would like to go to a, uh, an auto harp concert if, if there are any, uh, still being done today. Here. Right here. Here is that same logo on top. Connection is not private. Great! <laughs> I'm out of there. So we know that this was built, this harp was built by the Paramount Harp Company in New Jersey, likely, and uh, there there was a sticker in it, but was uh, all blacked out and scratched out somehow. <laughs> I can see how it would have all this exterior damage and scuffs and nicks on it, but and cracks. But why the sticker on the inside of the soundboard would be all black and scratched out? Uh, I don't know about that. Yes, here's the same logo as mine. Etsy, Etsy, Etsy is like the least helpful. <laughs> yeah, just. Don't show me the picture I was clicking on. Mandolin harp. Now this, this looks exactly like the one that I have. This is the exact one. I can see the, the colors are a bit faded on this one, but you can see 
Got the same logo, the same pattern around the soundboard. It's got the same uh, note label on it, and it has that uh, does have the uh, the chord panel, which was missing on this one, and that bottom part on that one, which this one is missing. Let's see, uh, man mandolin harp. For okay. Made from the late 1800s to early 1900s. That is that is what I thought. Uh, mandolin harps are a type of fretless uh, chord zither, like an auto harp. So it is not the same as an auto harp. Okay. Mandolin harps are unique in that they have a device literally called a gizmo that allows one to approximate uh, fast picking of a mandolin with the help of a rolling button panel that rolls hmm. uh, that uh, lowers a uh, plectrum pick down to the string then is moved rapidly back and forth imitating a mandolin tremolo sound wow I did not know that oh, <laughs> wish, well, this, wish this one came with that uh, mandolin harp was made by Oscar Schmidt Goodwill Finds antique Lynn harp bell harp company first I see the there's the paramount then the bell and then the Oscar Schmidt. So I'm guessing these are just subsidiary brands, or possibly a possibly ripoff brands. There's a number on it. Okay, let's add and look for a. Well, here it is, right here. I did not even see this. Zero seven three three. Then a random two on the bottom. And there's this zero seven zero seven. This one is printed straight across, where this one is crooked, and there's a random two stamped on it. What if that probably makes it, uh, I wonder if that was a mistake or just, uh, something that is making it extra rare. Because I see this one, which is made by Paramount, and the other one was made by Bell, although, I have to look on the label here, the label is completely blacked out. I don't know, I think they're, uh, we need to have, uh, some kind of, uh, high definition scanner on this, uh, so I'm, I'm guessing it m more likely was made by Bell because the label on the, the one made by Bell was uh, also black as well. All right, so what conclusions have we been coming to? So uh, we've been finding out that this is uh, a mandolin harp or a uh, harp zither as it have been saying it referred to that was made in around the uh, 19 early 1900s or late 1800s by uh, one of uh, two companies, the Paramount Concert Harp Company or the Bell Harp Company. Most likely, more likely the Bell Harp Company. I've been seeing this exact same uh, model on, on online with uh, either being made by the Bell Company or the the uh, Paramount Company. So if, I'm thinking those are either subsidiaries or, like I said, <laughs> ripoff companies. Um, but it's a uh, Really, really old. I do not know where this could have been coming from. I'm out of the know if uh, there is a way to know where it has been coming from. So um, I'm out of the know exactly how common these are. I've been seeing them on on the you know on the you know eBay and Etsy for for some pretty high prices. So I'm out of the know. They're probably not the easiest to be coming by. So uh, if anybody got any information information on this, uh, please let me know about this because. Again, I've not seen like anything like this before until I had seen it and then, then bought it. And I have this in my house and I, I'm wanting to be learning to play more on it. And uh, yeah, see what I can be doing for that, which maybe you'll be seeing some more videos coming uh, like that around uh, shortly. Who knows? Um, but yeah, anyway, like I was saying, uh, if you got any information, anything that could be helpful on this, please let me know. So um, this is a bit unusual of a video for my channel. But, you know, it was just interesting enough to be making a video on it. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll see some, you know, showcases of different rare or interesting musical instruments or artifacts like that in the future. So let me know if you're liking this and uh, if you're getting any insight or, you know, anything else you might want to know. Oh, and if you would like to start a, uh, a late 1800s, early 1900s uh, concert, harp, early music band, now I'd be down to collab, so <laughs> hit me up if you're inter uh, interested in that. But anyway, that is it for now. Don't follow too close, keep the faith, and don't take any wooden nickels. Lighting in here is really bad.
I was on the the light bulbs before I started filming. I think this one's just a bit loose. Oh. I think probably an easy fix.